Hello ladies and germs, we're back in Studio Q and not only that but we're on the lavender screen again. And why? Because it's MIF time. Isn't it Harriet? MIF. MIF as opposed to Melbourne International Film Festival. It seems no time since we were looking at the Queer Film Festival and now it's MIF time. So as usual, I'm Alan, I'm here with my good old cohort, partner in crime, Harriet. Hi. And a special guest today, our erstwhile floor manager, Lynn. How, how are you, Lynn? <laughs> You're sick of floors today. Oh, yeah, change of scenery. Yeah, <laughs> decided to get in front of the camera. Yeah, something different. Yeah, you've been with Ben a while now, haven't you? Three years. Are you, st are you still enjoying it? You must be. Oh, I love you... it. I come every location, I haven't missed well, only one week. Wow. Yeah. Three oh, years. You haven't sort of run off in, in a, a fit of terror, so you must still enjoy it. <laughs> it's a fun, fun job and I enjoy it. And it gets me out of my house. Oh, is that and bad? Is your house horrible? It <laughs> gets me out of um, where I live. It's a change of scenery. No, Lynn's a fabulous floor manager. She keeps us in. She keeps us in line, and she uh, tells us what to do. Gets those wind-ups happening, those countdowns. She's very good at telling us what to do. In a nice way. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Um, but um, so, if anybody was watching today and thinking of joining, Ben, what would you, would you, what would you say to them? Oh, join, and we need more volunteers because people come and don't stay. We need as many volunteers as we can get. That's it. People have a lot of commitments in life and it does get a bit hard, doesn't it? It does. At times. And I'm one of the only people that have actually stayed for three years and people come for a year then they have other stuff to do and they leave. Well, you, you should get a medal or a plaque or something. <laughs> I think that's after ten years. Oh, right. Oh, well, we're, that's fast approaching for some people. <laughs> yes, yeah, for you. Oh, well, and you. But we're here to talk film. Not all, not all this waffle. Um, the Melbourne Film and Festival. The <laughs> films. What were the films that well, we saw to this time? First of all, we'll let the people know the Melbourne Film Festival starts this very week. Last night, in fact, uh, to the 26th of July, Wednesday, with opening night, and it runs until the 13th of August. So it's a nice couple of weeks worth of uh, celluloid viewing. And as usual, it's a, it's a diverse festival, but there's a uh, nice little selection of queer-related films. Um, there's a nice mix of drama and documentaries. Um, some documentaries to look out for. Um, Between the Lines, India's Third Gender, is directed by a German fellow, Thomas Wartmann, and uh, actually is a look at India's third gender, i.e. the eunuchs. So this film is a, uh, a journey across India with three um, Hijras, as they're called, um, eunuchs, which are neither male or female. Yeah, it's a bit more exotic. Yeah. But part of their life is actually prostitution. It seems to be a big part of. So the they must be doing it somehow. so yes hijras eunuchs yes i do you know there's a, f a fetish in the queer community about Middle East, you, no, well, no, no. Well, yeah, there is, but about eunuchs. There's actually guys who have a fetish and actually have it done. Really? Yeah, by choice. And then what about the castrati in Italy, the tenors, oh, those voices. the sopranos, the right. men? Every time I hear that, that it's... are cas castrated more. Yeah, uh, yeah. to and preserve the the quality the of voice. the voice. Yeah, at all costs. That's pretty horrific. It's free. The, the voices just haunt me whenever I hear it. It's just. Yeah. Slightly freaky, and I have to close my legs as well. Um, but <laughs> there's a couple moving on. So that's um, Between the Lines, India's the Agenda. That's on Saturday, the 5th of August at 1 pm at the Greater Union Cinema in Russell Street. So give that a look. 
There's a few um, shorts packages on this year as well. We have a couple of accelerator packages um, which are umbre sort of umbrella themes. One of those is uh, Sexy Thing, directed by Denny Pentecost. Um, it was an official selection at Cannes this year, 2006, in the short film category. And uh, that can be seen Saturday the 29th of August, 3pm at Acme. Now we had a, a little look at that, didn't oh, we? Yeah, I certainly had a big look at that. Um, sexy Thing, I'm not too sure where that title really comes in. For me, it was a, it was kind of horrific. It was a sort of um, a teenage young girl, more interested in her teenage friend, mm. um, her female teenage and friend, exploring each other's likes and dislikes. And then it, it seemed like that was what the movie, what the short was all about. But then it but, turned yeah. ugly, very ugly. And we can just say that it is a lot. There's uh, innuendo on sex abuse. From well, yeah, that is the core of the someone. issue. She's dealing with that whole uh, story of being abused. The most powerful scene for me, it had this nice little thread running through it of the underwater aquatic world, the goldfish, her swimming with her yes. friend and escaping from yes. this, uh, this reality. The if dream like. world of the water. That's right, just escaping, Fluids. Fl uh, flying through yes. the water with her friend yes. with the goldfish and echoed in the fish tank in her room. So there was some abstraction going Indeed. on there and then it was came into the stark reality of the whole sexual abuse It was really, situation. It was really rammed home, her process of becoming a woman, the whole you know, the start of the periods and what yes, have you. that's but right. The most powerful moment for me was that moment in the toilet in the mirror she is actually recalling an experience you said the hands it's like super, it's like a back projection over her yeah. did you see that yeah. the hands undoing I noticed that it's quite powerful yeah. stuff that really unsettled me because it was quite tangible you could almost feel her being who am i am i am i a woman or am i the boy that i thought i might have been or where do I fit? Um, that sexy thing. That's uh, Saturday the 29th of August, 3pm at Acme as part of the Accelerator Shorts Package number one. Um, moving on, um, we had a look at another film the other day, a Portuguese uh, job made last year by Jao Pedro Rodriguez, and it was called Odette. Not exact, uh, another one that's not exactly a feel-good film, I will say. We do tend to find the more, slightly morbid ones, don't we? <laughs> it was your choice. <laughs> well, it sounded, it sounded different to me. Lynn, floor manager extraordinaire, you had a, a gander at this with me. What did, you, uh, um, what did you take away from it, or what did it take away from you? <laughs> Just show me that's how some people never get over the loss of a loved one mm. and a partner and, and even though this guy's boyfriend had died he still wanted to um, he still wanted to he loved his memory and if he was having um, sex with someone else he felt guilty Yes, that's very true that's very true, um, so it really does blast away that thing about gay men you know <laughs> Monogamy, couples, whatever. It's mm. monogamy is there. Love is there. And it, Odette, deeply. the main character, wanted to get into um, Petro's boy, um, bedroom, so she told his mother she was pregnant. It was a whole yeah. It, it, it was a boy. It looked like a boy couple film initially, but that really wasn't the focus. That was, was it? mainly on Odette and how obsessed she became. The title character. It was a journey of obsession, wasn't it? I, I don't want to give away the right, at the end shots. No, don't. Because it that's is. what turned my mind and my, my idea around about this movie. Because before that, I thought they were just too overly, if you could be overly obsessed, these two people really were. It certainly was about obsession. <laughs> but um, Pedro was just a tool for her to fulfil her neuroses, I think. Her neuroses which led to her obsession of Rui, the partner that remained alive. And... Um, yeah, I really guess um, it begs the question, how far does grief leave you open to delusion and being led down that path? And what is delusion and what is something else? Yeah, where does reality and grief and that memory become blurred? That was another thing, it was kind of a romance. 
It was a romance for me with a ghost, a memory of a go ghost, memory of, of someone. Mm. But it kind of was about two people and their love story in a very bizarre way. Very bizarre very way. Bizarre. <laughs> no, but Odette, I reckon that's well worth a look. I reckon that, that's my highlight of the festival so far. That's Wednesday the 9th of August, 1pm at the lovely Old Forum Theatre, um, corner of Russell and Flinders. Um, and I've never been to the Forum Theatre, so when you, you go, stunning. let us know what it, let it's me like. know what it's like. Because I've seen the outside, the facade, I've always looked at those gargoyles and amazing... It's um, Stunning. Elaborate. You just think that uh, togged, togged Roman wrestling boys are going to come out, gladiators are going to come out and have so, a turn. I'd love to have a look inside that theatre. You'd love to have a turn, would you? Yeah. <laughs> well, not with those people. Oh, no, you'd like a, a gladi gladi gladiatorette, wouldn't you? <laughs> well, there is now, I just made it up. And um, Troy Davies was a well known Australian kind of icon. He was compared to Andy Warhol um, mm -hmm. by a couple of people. He's an artist, actor, musician, um, HIV sufferer, uh, comes from Sydney, had a band called Eki Homo with the likes of Michael Hutchins in the 80s and is an artist um, on quite bizarre levels um, in, in certain uh, instances. Mm -hmm. But perhaps the most interesting aspect of his life was that he experimented with hormones and for a time became a woman. Well, actually, halfway towards being a woman. And lived this life for a while and actually prostituted himself thus. I don't know how I found out, but I found out that the estrogen my sister was taking for the pill was a female hormone. So I put two and two together and started taking them. And my body started changing. When I became Vanessa, I lost all my heterosexual friends. I was sort of in limbo because I didn't really like the gay scene. I, I spent a lot of time being a prostitute and I was like high class. You know. um, that's part of the documentary shorts package on the 2nd of August 2.50pm at ACME directed by Daniel Haywood and uh, an interesting life indeed. On, I would uh, like to see that. Yeah you should. Can you get free tickets for me? Well, honey, you're, you're part of the Studio Q Lavender Screen team. You should be there with bells on. You should be in the Royal Box. Maybe I can find that building. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll have a preview after, don't worry. Um, okay. Well, that's kind of a wrap on the old... Um, I should say... It was fun. And um, go to your Melbourne Film Festival guide. Available from all the usual places, cafes, Acme, libraries, all manner news of places. Agents are good. Yeah, news agents. And uh, or go to melbournefilmfestival.com.au to grab some tickets. You can buy the usual passes or whatever. <coughs> or ring up on 9662-3722. And um, yeah, it's fantastic, well worthwhile. Another example of why Melbourne is a great cultural city. Sure it is. It is. And uh, Harriet and Lynn, my dears, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's been an absolute pleasure, especially Hi. for you. And uh, <laughs> we will. Uh, <laughs> Harriet and I will be back after the break. You know, in a fabulous change of clothes. Um, not because we filmed it weeks ago or anything, <laughs> purely because we felt like it. And we're going to be introducing what has become a queer cult classic, Granny Queer. That was good. It was. She's well worth a look. Granny, stay around for her, and we'll be back in Studio Q with her right after this. Well, flat me silly with a crochet doily. Auntie Harriet, we're back looking through the we lavender. We are. We are. <laughs> we're looking through the lavender lens again. And we thought mm -hmm. we'd continue the trend of original Australian celluloid, as it were, with a look at a short which has done very well around the festival circuit over the last couple of years. Oh, yeah. That, that line I opened with, slap me silly, that's actually from, it's the catchphrase. No, no, please. Oh, actually. You said that, slap me silly. <laughs> <laughs> that's the catchphrase of a girl called Granny Queer. 
No and one? boy, she is and she gorgeous. Is queer. <laughs> and she's naughty. Granny Queer, it's a short film from a director called Jacinta Clowens. Now, she's another um, import Kiwi. These Kiwi, what's going on over there? So they have a lot of creative brilliant. juices flowing yes. in the old NZ. Yes. Look at the country. Well, it's beautiful, isn't it? Uh, apparently. I haven't been yet. Any invitations? The land of Lord of the Rings, <laughs> let's face it. But she, yes. Jacinta, was very influenced in her early days, as a lot of us were, by the classic British comedies. You know, Benny Hill, yes. the carry-ons, etc., etc. Oh, yeah, I seem to remember that. Do you? <laughs> <Air> <laughs> matron. <laughs> well, you can certainly see the uh, the roots of that influence in Granny Queer. Now, it's uh, animation, yes. we should say, from the, the word go. And uh, Granny My Queer... My favourite genre, animation. It? Yeah, it really is. You like a bit of animation? I do, and, and very clever stuff too it is. Did you grow up on um, the... Uh, <laughs> never mind where I grew up and how I grew up. It's about oh. it today. <laughs> oh, is it okay? <laughs> right now. <laughs> yes, Granny Queer lives with her voluptuous girlfriend, and you might just discover them waking up in their vibrating bed and going about their daily chores in their suburban <laughs> backyard, shall we say. Chores. Um, there's a, a various characters uh, reflecting that uh, classic British comedy genre. Yeah. There's a Kenneth Williams impersonator in there. Oh, I remember. I mean, yes. Air matron. I am male and I can prove it. <laughs> he does it well, <laughs> doesn't he? Oh. And, but no, it is actually a great little uh, little laugh. It's done, as uh -huh. I say, it's done the festival circuit. It's been to Paris at the Cinefable Festival. Uh, Winnipeg. Yeah? Yeah? Copenhagen. Woo! Um, Philadelphia, Lisbon, Los Angeles has been all around the world. As it has it won an award yet? It uh, hasn't won an award as it such. It ought to. But Jacinta, yeah. it's good to see our local people from our local community here yes. in Melbourne, here in Oz, getting out there. And can I show this to everyone? We'll have a look at Granny Queer. This is uh, her in the Granny. flesh, as it were. And she right is beautiful. Now, she is beautiful. And right now we'll see her even more in the flesh as we have a look at Granny Queer in action. And we hope you very much enjoy it looking through the lavender lens today. Thank you, my dear. Thank you, darling. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Over to Granny, and we'll see you soon on Through the Lavender Screen here on Studio Q. Bye-bye. <laughs> Fancy a cup of tea, Charlene, me love. Ah, Dal, I'm right. Oh, Russian caravan, Irish breakfast, kangaroo scrotum tea. Oh, chamomile. Bum, more oranges and lemons. The bells of St. Lemons. Oh, my. Oh, oh, knock me over with a feather duster. <gasps> with a crochet doily. What's wrong, Dal? Oh, it's your bloomers, your pink flowery ones. They're missing from the line. <gasps> but they're me friggin' Sunday bloomers. Don't you worry, Shani, me love. I'll get to the bottom of this. Hmm. I wonder if that new neighbour has anything to do with it. I just wonder... Come on, Sarah. Going again. Oh, 
my spinster great aunt Nora. Oh, it's your bloomers. I can see your bloomers. Oh, phew. Oh, what's he doing? Oh, your poor bloomers. Oh, I can hardly look. What, 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 what? What's happening? Guess I'll look. Oh! Bugger me! Our neighbour's a friggin' pervert. Oh, he's ruining my bloomers. Let's call the police. The army. Jerry Springer. Oh, that'll show him. Wait. Hang on a minute. <laughs> Not long now, boys. <laughs> <laughs> you bloody idiot. Have another look, you silly old tart. Well, he's still not going to get away with this. Come on, Charlene, we're going in. Oh, lovely. This will spice things up a bit. Allow me, my little muffin. I believe you may have something that belongs to us. Yes. Oh, I'm so sorry, but I had to have them. It's a Hawaiian theme party, you know, and they're just... just so... Hawaiian! You know what's going to happen now, don't you, Mr. Witt? <laughs> We're going to... crash this party! <laughs> Free beer! <laughs> After you, I'd be delighted. Well, I bought those particular bloomers in Venice at a scooter convention in 1982, I think. Oh, and then there was a time in 76. Oh, I was stranded off the coast of Tasmania, and Granny was saving the day, and this tiger came out and wrestled with Granny, and Granny took my undies and strangled the tiger. 